Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen. And in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm Pastor Sam and I'm so glad you joined me today. I want to encourage you to stay tuned for the next half hour because I'm sharing a message with you. This is the, the second part of a two-part message. I'm sharing a message with you that I call Signs of His Return. Where are we living as it relates to the coming of the Lord? He said, I will come again. Will He come in your lifetime and mine? You'll need to stay tuned to find out. And here's what I want to do. I would like to send to you free and postpaid a book I've written entitled The Beginning of the End. I want you to have it because you need to be updated on what's going on now and know that you and I are living in the closing hours before the coming of the Lord. Here's what you do. Call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Or you can write to me, Sam Luke, at Victory Tabernacle, 11700 Genito Road, Midlothian, Virginia, 23112. Here's a third way. You can contact me at sluke at victorytab.org. I want to send you this book, and if you'll call or write to me today, I'm going to send it to you absolutely free. So let's go together now in the service where the power of God is at work, and I'm talking about the coming of the Lord. So get ready to be blessed. What happens in America? is critically important to the rest of the world. And right now people are watching me around the world via the internet. The technology has finally caught up with the Great Commission. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Right now there's somebody that is watching me in a Middle Eastern country. There's somebody who is a Muslim who is watching me right now. You say, Pastor Sam, do you really believe what you're saying? Let me tell you, I may say some things that are controversial, and even in this church, when I, and some of the things I'm going to say today, I'll get some mail from people saying, you don't have to be so graphic. You don't, have to, you don't have to get in my face with that. Not everybody's going to agree with what I say, but I can tell you right now, I have never said anything that I didn't believe was the truth. And I'm telling you, sir, you, ma'am, the truth. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's not Allah. It's not Muhammad. It's not Buddha. It's not Confucius. It is the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is Lord. Jesus didn't come with bombs and guns he didn't come to force the world into submission. He came to give His life a ransom for many. He came to be the sin substitute and the sin sacrifice for all men of all ages throughout all of time. He did not come to marshal an army to lead Israel out from under the tyranny of the Roman Empire, but He allowed the Romans to take Him and hang Him on a cross while the Jews said, Crucify Him. We have no king but Caesar. They said, You can't deliver yourself. Why don't you deliver yourself? You could deliver others. Why don't you deliver yourself? Truer words were never spoken. There was no way that Jesus could deliver himself from the death of the cross and deliver you too. So he chose to die so that we might have eternal life. On the third day he was raised from the dead for our justification. He is seated at the right hand of the Father as our intercessor. And praise God, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But don't forget the rest of the story. He said, I will come again. And you say, well, how do we know he's coming as soon? The signs of the times are all around us. Today in America, men glory in their gore. 
Our nation is stupefied by sin and crippled by corruption. No other generation has rejoiced so much in evil practices. Now here it comes, get ready. Somebody said, now nah, I'm just you, you're gonna do that. You do it every Sunday. You need to, you need to chill, Pastor. I'm tired of it. I'm tired every time you get up, you talk about the homosexuals and gay marriage and, and you sing another song, Pastor Sam. Learn this one first. When you learn this one, I'll sing another one. Homosexuals flaunt their lewdness and stand in God's house, claiming to be delivered to indulge their sins. You say, you got scripture for that. Jeremiah 7 and 10. And you come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, says the Lord. And you say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. They refuse to change their ways. They've lost all sense of guilt and become comfortable in their sins. Last week, New Zealand voted in their parliament to make same-sex marriage legal. It, it, it won't be long till it's here. Ten states now in the United States sanction same-sex marriage. They call it marriage equality. Watch it. It won't be long. And it will become a law of the land. It may be the signal to the Lord to say it's enough. And the rapture will take place. It, there may not be one thing that any of us can do to stop it. But I want you to know this, pro, this preacher right here is going to scream and shout. I'm going to make some noise. I'm going to tell every elected politician, you better not do it. If you want to get reelected, if you have a backbone, find it. I'm not advocating violence. I'm telling you, stand up and be counted. There may not be one thing that we can do to change it. I believe the next thing would be, oh, marriage equality. Well, I'm a 40-year-old man, and I, I'm in love with a 12-year-old boy. And his parents said, it's okay we get married. I'll put him through school. I'll drive him to junior high every day. That's okay. I can take care of him. i got plenty of money. Somebody said, oh, well, marriage equality. I want to be married to several people. Not just one. I would be mad. Somebody said, well, they did that in the Old Testament. That's before credit cards. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, Lord. Let's don't go there. Then somebody else says, well, I want to be married to my sister. Who says I can't be? We're talking about marriage equality. And on and on and on and we have opened Pandora's box. I still believe that this is the best definition of marriage you'll ever get right here. One man and one woman for life. Now somebody said, okay, that's it. I'm not coming back. I've had it. That's it. That's it. I've had it every time you come back. Bye. Because listen. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And if you want to get mad at me, I can tell you, ask my wife. She'll give you a whole laundry list of reasons why you ought to be mad at me. Because I know what it is to mess up. I know what it is to fail. But if you leave this church because I preach against sin, I will wear it as a badge of honor. Amen. And let me tell you, there's coming a day. I, there's coming a day. I would be foolish to worry about what you think about it. Because there's coming a day I'm going to stand before the Lord. And He's not going to say, uh, Eric, what did he preach? Eric, did he preach the truth? He's not going to say, Shannon, was, was he, what, did he preach the word? He's going to look me right dead in the eye and he'll know. And if I've preached the truth and I've done what he told me to do, I'll hear him say, you fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished the course. Come on. Amen. I want to hear him say that. So more and more, more and more, you got people that say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. And I'm against those things, but don't get in my face with it. 
I believe that Proverbs 28 and 13 is true. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I believe that when David sinned and he was exposed, and by the way, we hear all people talk, all people, all people, everybody, everybody's talking about honesty. You ever notice that? Man, let's keep it real here, man. Let's keep it real. Keep it real up in here. You know? Everybody wants to keep it real, but nobody wants the truth. When you start telling the truth, it's like, whoa, hold it now. Don't, don't keep it that real. David was exposed. And he said, I'm troubled. I'm bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. But he said, I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. And I hear him shout, blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven and whose transgressions are covered. That means it feels good to be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins. That's the biggest little word in the English language. If. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy upon him to our God for he will abundantly pardon. You got time for one more? Two? Three? I ain't got but two. <laughs> but... You're helping me preach so good today, I may come up with another one. I don't know. <laughs> senseless violence, bloody gang rioting, and senseless killing have made the streets of our cities unsafe. Television, for the most part, has become corrupt and violent. How many of you remember Captain Kangaroo? <laughs> See, I got some of my peeps out there. You know, even Mr. Rogers, some of you, Mr. Mr. Rogers. A wonderful day in the neighborhood. Be my friend. Ozzie and Harriet, things are different now. So-called TV dramas feature endless scenes of bloodshed, violent death, rape. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 17, talking about our time, you eat the bread of wickedness and you drink the wine of violence. Proverbs 13 and 2. The transgressors shall eat violence. Sinners, eat it up. That's what they want. This generation has grown up feasting on garbage. Uncontrolled violence has brought down every society from Noah's day to Hitler's Germany. Hosea 4 and 2. You swear and lie and kill and steal and commit adultery. There is violence everywhere with one murder after another. This is why your land is not producing. It is filled with sadness. Now, I don't know where you stand on some of these issues, and I know they're controversial. They're hot-button issues. But why is it that every time there's a killing, it's all about gun violence? And we never look at the perpetrator. In the 70s, we decided that we, late 60s and 70s, we decided we don't need to even mention God in our schools. And we've raised a generation of heathens. And the television has been their babysitter. By the time they're 18 years old, they've seen 100,000 simulated murders on television. And then they go to school because they got dad's gun out of the gun case. And they go to school and they blow away a bunch of young people, kids killing kids. And the first thing we want to do, let's pass another law. We're not even enforcing the laws we've got. That is a knee-jerk reaction that says, we know that what we're doing is not going to make any difference, but we need to do something. Hey, here's a suggestion, Washington. Here's a suggestion, Mr. Politician. Why don't you do something that works? Why don't you make an effort to get God's people on their knees and get God back in the home and get God back in the school? You say you believe in God? Let's see if you do. Oh, you can't do that in America. Why not? 98% of the laws that we have today came right out of this Bible. University of Houston did an exhaustive study to find out that almost every, almost every comment that was made by legislators among the founding fathers when they were talking about the future of this country, our laws, 
almost everything they said came out of the Bible. They would even stop and get on their knees and pray in Congress. What happened to our country? Sin has ruined our country. Here, here, here I go. Here I go. Get ready. Put on your seatbelt. Here I go. Abortion has killed more babies in America than all the wars that we fought since the beginning of this nation. We have killed more babies than the combined populations of New York City and Los Angeles, California. On the 40th anniversary of Roe versus Wade, since 1973 until the 40th anniversary of Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy, we murdered 50 million babies. Every 22 seconds in this country, another little life is snuffed out in an abortion clinic somewhere. Planned Parenthood, which operates abortion clinics nationwide, received $400 million in federal funds, your tax money, to promote its doctrine of death. 4,000 babies every day are murdered in Christian America, sanctioned by the Supreme Court of the land. Now, that's listen, listen, listen. Just because something is legal in America does not make it right. You need to remember that. There's a doctor that probably most of you never heard of. His name is Kermit Gosnell. He's on trial. He's a Philadelphia abortionist with a 30-year career who's killed hundreds of babies, and many of them outside the mother. You've heard of partial birth abortion. Somebody said, okay, all right, I get it. No, you don't. Because most of what you heard about abortion, you think, of, it, well, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of like an appendectomy, isn't it? Isn't that like a tonsillectomy? No, it's cold-blooded, premeditated murder. Now, you may have done it in ignorance, and God will forgive you, and He does forgive. I'm not adding to your condemnation, but folks, we got a generation that we need to tell this story to. This man, the reason you don't hear about him is because, strangely, the media has decided it's not newsworthy. There's a media blackout. He joked about some of those babies big enough to walk to the mailbox. He even commented that he'd heard them scream. This I heard yesterday on the news. And I know that this is graphic. But this woman came in late and she was about to give birth and they ushered her into the bathroom and she sat on the toilet and the baby was born and the baby was trying to swim to get out of the water when Gosnell took a pair of snips, clipped the spinal cord, and the baby let out a scream. The Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. We'll forgive their sin, we'll heal their land. For nine months, my wife and I watched on the sonogram a picture of our little boy. We saw him growing, we saw his hands moving, we saw him sucking his thumb. He didn't make it to the finish line. We gave him a burial. He was not a blob of tissue, he was a human being, and we'll see him in heaven, but I've thought many times how could anybody, anybody with refined sensibility do such a horrible thing? And here is the answer. Satan is blinding our eyes to the truth. I've never done this in my life. But as I was praying and preparing for this, God spoke to me and He said, when you get to this point, I want you to ask the entire church to pray with you and to repent over the national sin 
of abortion. I'm going to ask you right where you are if you would just agree with me in prayer. Stretch your hand this way, please. Father, we're sorry. There would be 50 million people among us. Maybe a doctor that would have discovered a cure for cancer. Maybe another Billy Graham. Maybe a missionary that would have changed the world. But certainly good fathers and mothers that would have loved you and served you. Business people, Lord, that would have been a blessing to the economy of this nation and a witness for you in a dark place. But we murdered them. And rather than being outraged by it, we just turned away. We looked away because we didn't want to get involved. We felt like that was the work of politicians. It wasn't up to us. We didn't want to hear about it in our church services. And Lord, while you know in my heart I would never advocate violence. My heart is broken because your people have not humbled themselves and turned from their wicked ways. And today, Lord, I pray for the sake of this next generation, for the sake of our children, that you would turn America back to Calvary, that we would repent as a nation. Not just here and now, but Lord, in our homes, that we'd get our children on our knees, gather around the family altar and pray one more time. That we'd raise up a generation that loves you and loves your word. And hates sin and wickedness. We know that they've been exposed to an education system that's been hijacked by left-wing liberals that have no love, no respect, no appreciation for your word. That won't even allow the name of Jesus to be spoken in the public schools anymore. Oh, they can talk about witchcraft and they can talk about Muhammad and they can talk about Buddha and they can talk about Eastern religions, but not the name of Jesus. Not even permitted to wear a shirt with His name on it. God, forgive us in America. Forgive us and send a revival in this land. Oh, God, turn us back. Send a revival, Lord. <laughs> send a revival. Send a revival, Lord. And prepare us for the coming of Jesus Christ. For it's in His name I pray. Praise God. I believe that you felt heaven come down when you prayed. The Spirit of the Lord is there where you are right now. And the most important thing after you give your heart and life to Christ is to find that right church. A going church for a coming Christ. A church where Jesus is Lord and everybody's important. That's what Victory Tabernacle is about. I want you to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for two full hours of praise and worship and ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in His presence around the altar. And don't forget the last Sunday in every month is our miracle service, which means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in the chapel. And God is confirming His Word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. On Wednesday evening, you can find us right here in our Family Enrichment Night service where we have something special for every age group and every member of the family. It's fun, it's exciting, it's relevant, and it only lasts for an hour and a half. At 8.30, we're walking out the door. So here's what we have. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens called Battle Cry, and a ministry to college and career age young people called The Vine, and I'm teaching in the main sanctuary. So be sure to join us. One more thing, I want you to go to our website, that's www.victorytab.org, and notice two things. Notice, first of all, that if you can't be with us in person on Sunday morning, we'll bring the service to you. You can join us via live stream on the internet. It's called Ustream. Just 
click on Ustream at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning and you enter right into a live worship service with us. Also, 24 hours a day and around the world, you can go to Victory Battle Cry. It's our 24-hour radio network. Inspirational music, teaching, preaching, testimonies. You'll love it, so be sure to check it out. Thank you for joining us on the program today. I want to remind you that if you would like my book, The Beginning of the End, I want to send it to you absolutely free and postpaid. And all you have to do is call me at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881, The Beginning of the End. God bless you. And until we're together again like this around the Word of God, remember at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen.